Good morning. You have just tuned in to the Sunday School Teacher, which is an outreach ministry of Applying the Word Ministries of LaGrange, Georgia. To find out more about us, you may visit us at www.applyingtheword-ga.org or just simply write us at P.O. Box 1075, LaGrange, Georgia, 30241. I am co-pastor Pat McFarlane, and I will be your teacher for the day. I have been mandated by God to teach you the word. This program will review, first of all, your Sunday school lesson. We hope to encourage you to attend and participate in your Sunday school class. We also want you to fall in love with the Word of God. Finally, it is our desire that someone would dedicate their life to Jesus Christ. Glory to God and make Jesus their choice. Now, I need you to get your Bible and get ready. It is now time for Sunday School. Good morning. Good morning to you. That's right. It is now time for our Sunday School lesson. We have a very exciting lesson and I am sure you will enjoy it. In fact, it's a continuation from last week. Glory to God. Look, I want to tell you, you can go to our website, to our audio page at www.applyingtheword-ga.org if you want to hear the lesson again or if you would like to share it with friends. Now, I need you to know that it's downloaded each Friday on our website around 5 o'clock, sometime before. But you can listen to the lesson on Fridays or you can listen at the, at the time of our broadcast. Glory to God. Listen, listen, listen. Our lesson is entitled, Jesus Glorifies God. Listen, Jesus glorifies God. John the 7th chapter, verses 14 to 24. I'm going to say it again. John the 7th chapter, verses 14 to 24. Well, as we begin our lesson, you need to know that we're talking about the Feast of the Tabernacles. Well, it was a joyful occasion and it lasted seven days. It, between September or October, I'm not too sure it was, it, what month, when families camped out in temporary shelters to remember God's faithfulness to Israel in the wilderness on their way from Egypt when they were in bondage to Canaan, which was going to be their promised land, under the leadership of Moses. The Hebrews called it the Festival of Boots because for the full week that it lasted, people lived in makeshift boots made of branches and leaves. Well, town dwellers, what they did, they erected their boots in the courtyards or on their flat housetops. Well, Jesus is going to attend the Feast of the Tabernacles. Well, Jesus walked in Galilee as the Feast of the Tabernacles approached because he did not want to walk in Judah. He did not want to go directly into Jerusalem at that time because Jesus knew the Jews sought to kill him. Remember last week we talked about what was going on, how they kept their eyes, they kept watching Jesus. Well, they really, 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 really wanted to kill Jesus. Well, you need to know that Jesus was not afraid, but he was aware of God's perfect timing. Listen, he was aware of God's perfect timing, so he knew that it was not yet time for him to surrender his life. So Jesus knew that he had to follow the timing of God. It was some things that he needed to finish. It was some things that he needed to say. It was some teachings that he needed to do. Glory to God. So he still had some work to do to what, so that people could be delivered, even the Gentiles. So, so Jesus' own brothers, you know, the Bible says that Jesus, what well, he did have what brothers. In other words, after he was born, Mary did have what other children. So Jesus had brothers, and his brothers tended to challenge him because they really, really did not believe. Well, the people of Jerusalem often looked down on the Jews of Galilee. Since Jesus did not did most of his miracles in Galilee, it gave the religious leaders in Jerusalem 
another reason to say that Jesus wasn't the Messiah. Because he didn't do most of his work in front of the right audience. They felt that they were the right audience, the people of Jerusalem. So Jesus' brothers told Jesus to, to prove himself that if he was the Messiah by going in Jerusalem, which is the center of Judaism. So, so you need to prove yourself, Jesus. You, you need to go into what? Into Jerusalem. And, and, and if you are what you say you are, who you say you are, then you need to prove yourself. Jesus' brothers are saying, go into Judah that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. Jesus' brothers told him to prove himself the Messiah on a bigger stage. Jerusalem, the center of Judaism. Well, you need to think about this. The earthly brothers of Jesus did really not believe. I told you that. Did not really believe in who Jesus said he was. Did not believe that he was indeed the Messiah, the son of the living God. They believed in the miracles because they saw the miracles. They saw people being healed and delivered. It should be noted that the brothers of Jesus never seemed to be supportive of his ministry as the Messiah before his death. But 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 after his resurrection, it's a whole different story. But but after his resurrection, the brothers of Jesus were numbered among the disciples. You can see that in Acts 1 and 14. Jesus responded to his brothers. John 7, chapter verses 6 to 9. Jesus replied, It's not the right time for me to go now. In other words, you tell me to go, but it's not the right time. He's still dealing with the timing of God. But 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 you can go anytime and it will make no difference. He said, in other words, you, you, yeah, you can go anytime. But my timing <laughs> has to be in line with who? With God. For the world can't hate you, but it does hate me because I accuse the world of sin and evil. <laughs> See, Jesus said, I'm on a mission. I'm accusing the world of what? Of sin and of evil. Of course they don't like me. But you can go you can go to Jerusalem anytime and nothing's gonna happen. Nobody's gonna threaten your life. But I have to wait on the timing of God. You go on, Jesus said, and I'll come later when it's the right time. So he remained in Galilee. Well, let's see what happens next. Jesus does go to Jerusalem, but he goes secretly. Let's look at verses 10 to 13, Living Bible. It says, But after his brothers had left for the celebration, then he went too, through, though he went secretly, being out of the public's eye. The Jewish leaders tried to find him at the celebration, and they kept asking if anyone had seen him. Jesus knew that. They were going to be looking for him. They wanted to accuse him. They wanted to kill him. They, they were looking for him. Verse 12 says, there was a lot of discussion among themselves, among the crowd. Some said, he's a wonderful man. While others said, nah, he's fooling the public. But no one had the courage to speak out for him in public. They didn't, they didn't want to say anything in public. Why? Because they were afraid of retaliation. They were afraid of what of the Jewish leaders. They were afraid of the people. So, so, so Jesus, I told you, he, he was in Jerusalem, but again, he had to wait on what, on the timing of God. So, so God evidently gave him the permission to enter the temple and boldly teach the word of God. Let's see. Let's see. Well, beginning at verse 14, let's see what Jesus is saying. The Jews were shocked at the knowledge of Jesus because why? Listen, listen. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and he began to teach they were shocked he came to jerusalem in his father's timing he taught boldly he never went he never went backwards or or kind of seemed uneasy he stood boldly on proclaiming the truth and the jews marveled they couldn't believe it wow they were listening to him ministering saying how know this man let us have a never been learned. In other words, they were prideful because they had gone to school. They were studying. They were students of the word. And they want to know, how could Jesus know all of this? 
How can he have so much knowledge of what was going on in the Old Testament? Well, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was there in the very beginning, glory to God. He knew the Word, glory to God. So, so, so the Jewish leaders knew that, that Jesus had not studied, or he had not even been to school. He had never sat under a prominent rabbi. Jesus did not follow the norm. What was going on? But 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 he 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 what seemed to be very very knowledgeable. He seemingly was a what a very knowledgeable teacher of the what of the law, of the word. But there was no evidence that he had been trained. So this kind of confused him. Well, I need you to know that Jesus acknowledged his teaching didn't come from man. God that. Jesus acknowledged that his teaching comes from God. Look at verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. In other words, God. This is God's doctrine. This is God's word. And it's him that sent me, and it's his doctrine that I am saying in teaching. If the Jewish leaders listened carefully to the doctrine of Jesus, they would know that it was all rooted in the Old Testament scriptures and that it was indeed from God. He was quoting from the Holy Scriptures. But again, they were religious like many people. They're religious. They be in the church. They be in the building. They be in the environment. They be in the, in the group. But they really don't know him. They really, really did not know God. They really, really did not fully understand the word of God because I told you last week that they had what well, they had added many things to the word of God, many rules, many rituals. So, so they, they, they were following things that they had created. Jesus didn't claim to be self-taught. No, he didn't do that. He claimed to be God-taught. Glory to God. He, he didn't say, well, no, I know this because I know this. But he said, I'm getting it from God inviting his listeners to examine his teaching according to the scripture. Because if he would have said, this comes from me, they wouldn't have looked at the scripture. He said, I need you to look at the scripture. It's written in the word of God. So, so Jesus gives them two evidences of a true teacher. Listen, listen. Jesus is going to tell them the true evidences of a true teacher. Let's look at verse 17. It says, if any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine. I'm going to say it again. And that's true today. If any man will do the will of God, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So so, so if you're in the will of God, he's telling the, the, the people, he, if you're in the will of God, he said, you, you know the doctrine. He that speaketh of himself, he's not, he, he seeketh his own glory. So, so, pretty listen. If you talk too much about yourself, glory to God, you're seeking your own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. So Jesus was saying, look, look, let me give you a test. Let me show you something that, that you need to speak of what? Of God. Hallelujah. You don't need to speak of yourself. You don't need to glorify yourself. You need to glorify God because when you glorify God, then you're what? You're true witness of the what? Of the word. Jesus gave us two measures. He said, look, look, there's two things that you need to know about a good teacher, a true teacher. Number one, does the teaching come from God? That is, is it according to the revealed word of God? So a true teacher, where is the teaching coming from? It has to come from the true revealed word of God. Listen, does the work of, give glory to God or does it give glory to man? If it gives glory to God, <laughs> glory to God, that's another what measure of what a true teacher. A true teacher is not seeking to what to build him or herself up, but they're seeking to what to build up God, the kingdom of God, and to get people to look at God and to seek God and to surrender to God. The people objected to the teachings of Jesus. Wow. They objected. Why? Because they didn't fully know the doctrine. They fully did not know the scripture. They were fully looking and judging Jesus because they didn't like his teaching. His teaching appeared to be contrary to what they were teaching. And it was contrary because he was teaching the truth of the word. And they were teaching religion. They were te teaching, teaching tradition. Listen, listen. He said, 
did not Moses give you the law? <laughs> Jesus actually, <asked him. laughs> Moses gave you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law. Oh my God! Look at Jesus accusing him. He used to say, Moses gave you the law, but look, look, you're not even keeping the law. Why go ye about to kill me? Jesus asked this question. Why, why are you trying to kill me? Because he knew their hearts. He was God. Emmanuel, God with us. He knew they hated him. He knew that. None of you keep the law. Jesus just stated that just to them. He said, none of you actually keeping the law. <laughs> you quoting things from the law. But you're not keepers of the law. You're not obeying the law. He was absolutely sinless, Jesus. He came into this world without sin. Sinless. He came from God. And true always seeking the glory of God in heaven. He wasn't seeking his own glory, but he was seeking the glory of the Father who had sent him. Whereas, you find that the Sadducees and the Pharisees were glorifying themselves. They dressed with the long robes and, and they wanted to be seen in the marketplaces. They wanted to be acknowledged, glory to God. But, but Jesus was seeking to show them their way to God. In contrast, but you're not in with the fellowship. You're not into what the fullness of God, not in the word of God. You don't understand what the word is, what's fully saying to you. So Jesus was explaining them what the word was really saying, and they were guilty. But you know what? They were angry because they were religious. It was their way or the highway. That's how some people are. You can't tell them the truth. They're not going to receive the truth because they prefer to stay in darkness. Men love darkness more than they love light. So, so even, even though Jesus was teaching them the, what, the truth of the word and quoting from the scripture that they had studied, that they had gone to school and learned, they still could not believe. Why? Because it was their way, the highway. They wanted Jesus to talk just like they did, but they were not teaching according to what to the word of God. Listen, Jesus came to illuminate the truth. He came to show the truth. He came to help us, glory to God, so that we can walk into what the fullness of life, that we can walk into what an abundant life, that we can know the truth. The Bible said if we know the truth, the truth is going to make you free. Glory to God. Listen, listen. It's important that we know what the truth. Don't let the enemy fool you. Don't let the enemy fool you. Our lesson also said that Jesus glorified God. We must glorify the Father. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's God all by himself. We got to learn how to what, how to glorify God. Oh, Father God, we love you. Glory to God, we, we adore you. We, oh, God, we worship you. Glory to God. You are God all by yourself. You sent us Jesus to this world. Yes, you did. You did, glory to God, because you saw the need of mankind. We needed to what? To be brought back. We needed to be saved. We needed to be redeemed. And you sent us Jesus, glory to God, to show us the way to come back to God. Listen, God, we love you and we magnify you. We worship you. We adore you. Listen, listen, Jesus glorified God. And if Jesus glorified God, then how much more are we, glory to God, to glorify God? How much more are we? To give him the praise and to give him the honor. Our lesson says this, Jesus glorified God. Listen, listen. They were celebrating the feast of the tabernacle, I told you in the lesson. They were celebrating because they had what the Lord God had what moved them out of what? Out of bondage. Moses led them out of bondage. But God was right there all the time performing miracles, feeding them bread from heaven. Glory to God. He 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 even opened up the Red Sea and allowed them to cross what on dry land. Listen, God was showing himself that he was with them. Glory to God. And when you read the scriptures, they should have been reading the scripture and glorifying God. And they read in the scripture that he was gonna send a what? A Messiah. But guess what? They couldn't receive. They were so busy looking at Jesus because he was different. Yeah, he was different. He was holy. He was from God. Emmanuel, God with us. God dwelling right there among us. Glory to God. And here they were angry with Jesus because Jesus had healed a man on the Sabbath. They were angry because Jesus stood boldly upon the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. When you stand boldly on the word of God, don't expect the world to love you. Glory to God. They, they didn't love Jesus. So, so don't expect the world to, to pat you on the back. But listen, you stand firm on the word of God. 
You stand firm on what? On the word of God. Do not compromise the truth of the word. Jesus did. He gave us a good example. He did not compromise. He accused them of being what? Sinners, because that's what they were. You, you're reading the law, but you're not obeying the law. You, you, you're looking at me, glory to God, but you need to be looking at yourself. That's what Jesus was telling them. They needed to know more about the what? The word of God. Not only that, the word of God needs to come alive. We're on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way right now. Help us, Lord. We want to be what? Students of the word. We want that word to come on the inside of us. God, we want to be able to open that word, understand that word, digest that word, live that word. Father God, have your way right now, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, help us, God. Open up the scripture to us, God. Open up our understanding. Let us be students of the word of God. Let us be followers. Oh, God, have your way. In the name of Jesus. We, we saw in the lesson today. We saw in the lesson today that they were looking for fault. They were looking to criticize Jesus instead of wanting to learn from him. Let's learn what the word of God is saying to us. Let, let's put on the full armor of God. Because guess what? Guess what? You're in a battle. You're in a battle. Glory to God. We're, we're fighting. Glory to God. And you got to be ready. You got to have on the full arm of God. You got to be prepared. Glory to God. You can't stop. You got to keep fighting. Keep on fighting. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Glory to God. Keep on. Because what Jesus did, he glorified God. He tried to teach the people the way. Glory to God. And he's still teaching us the way. According to what? According to the word. This is Pastor Arthur McFarlane praying that you have received the teachings from today's lesson. Don't forget to write us at P.O. Box 1075, LaGrange, Georgia, 30241. And visit us on our website at www.applyingtheword-ga.org. Until next week, God bless you.